Hey guys, welcome back to Candid Cloud Convos. We are your hosts, Gina and Emilita. Your favorite hosts, your favorite podcast. <laughs> back with some chisme chatter for the full episode because you guys loved it so much. Ooh, love that. We hope you guys have had a beautiful week. And if not, we are here for you. We are here for you. Back at it again. <laughs> <laughs> White buns. <laughs> oh, what was it? Dan, yeah. Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> you know they went on Ellen for that? Yes, I did. I did know what? that. What? Like they did. <laughs> and then what did they do? They just said it again or something? I think they literally just said it. And then I think she said it after them. And then that was it. Commercial break. That's crazy. <laughs> but anyways, he probably made some money off that. Oh, I'm sure. Do you think he at least got him some free vans sent to him? I would hope. You would think if he was smart and like, like did it wisely, he should have been like, oh, sponsor me. Right. Ooh, you, how many views I got? Sponsor I think me. we just always think everything could be a brand deal. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> have the entrepreneurial mind. Is that how you say it? If he's eventually making money from it, it might as well. I mean, shit, why not? Make it be something. So our first topic is that we're doing a BFF recap from the weekend so we had a bff date um it was beautiful it was beautiful but we did not do but one thing on our actual list of things to do actually two things yes we did yes we did we did get boba <laughs> yes and we did go to home goods <laughs> and we did go to home goods so on our agenda was because we mentioned to you guys about revamping the instagram you know getting the whole aesthetic down whatever <laughs> She's still in progress. Don't worry about her right now. In the very, very early stages. She's, she's hibernating <laughs> for the winter. <laughs> um, but yeah, so agenda was Take pictures. Um, oh. and I still did getting boba. First. That was first and foremost. It didn't, but that's okay. We still got it. And it was really good. And then we also wanted to go and take some pictures together, take some pictures of each other, whatever. We were looking cute. We had it planned, outfits and everything. We did not take one picture. Not one. Actually, that's a lie. Jingle, jangle. Jingle, jangle. (laughs) We found a mug. (laughs) We found a mug at Home Goods that said jingle, jangle. It was so uh, funny, though, because... And it's probably a you had to be there moment, but I'm telling you, we were walking through the aisles and <laughs> let's make them be there with us. What happened? <laughs> we were walking through the aisles of Home Goods, and you know you're in the decor like holiday section, so <laughs> there's a bunch of mugs, like Christmas mugs, and we're just walking past. And at the t- in that specific moment, we weren't saying anything. <laughs> Out of nowhere, Emily goes jingle jangle. <laughs> And we damn near oh, fell over laughing. It fucking killed me, bro. Like, I could not <laughs> stop laughing. And then I just couldn't <laughs> stop saying it. Yeah. And then it just became, we just kept saying it, like, jingle, jangle. Jingle, jangle. <laughs> jingle, jangle. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, every time would make us start cracking up all over again. Yeah. Like, it, nothing killed that. The entire night, we just kept saying it. <laughs> That was like the highlight. I don't know why, but it was so fucking funny. And the fucking pralines. Bitch, did you ever look up what a praline was? Yeah, I remember um, it was like another form of chocolate or something like that, like a a healthier. So guys at Home Goods, we were in the chocolate set. We went through every single aisle, okay? Every (laughs) single one. Every aisle of Home Goods and TJ Maxx together because it's combined store. It's a form of confection, excuse me. Oh, what does that mean? Um... It's a culinary <laughs> nut. Usually almonds, pecans, and hazelnuts, and sugar. Cream is a common third ingredient. Interesting. So in the chocolate aisle, we found that 99.9% of all of the items there had praline on it. And we didn't know what the hell praline was. So we just kept Everything it. was praline. Everything. Candle, oh. chocolate. Huh? Do you remember the, um, the seasoning? Oh, my God. Which one? <laughs> Oh, the, the finger licking, <laughs> the kicking chicken finger licking, <laughs> kicking kick chicken finger licking. Dude, I bet you that's fire though. It, it looked probably good. Was. It, dude, yeah, it looked, it looked good. good. I bet it was. No pictures were taken. We also didn't do the business thing we were supposed to do. Um, I don't even know what happened. Like we completely forgot about that. 
Yeah. I um like completely. I think we were so focused on the light because now that it gets early. Oh, light, and then what happened at Costco? That really threw us oh, off. Yeah. There was some commotion at the Costco gas station. So we're all like, you know, being cheese mosa. So we're trying to see what's going on. Right. It was hella like <laughs> we just couldn't get close enough to see what actually happened. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if we should get close enough. Right. It was, it was like four or five cop cars, a couple different um fire trucks. Mm-hmm. Few, but no yeah. ambulance or anything like that. Seen one. Oh, there was one? one or two, yeah. Oh shit, okay, never mind. I just seen the lights, but I knew it wasn't a fire truck because they're like obviously a lot longer. Um, yeah, I just seen the lights, but yeah, who knows what the hell happened yeah. there? It was definitely a great day though. Yes. Very much enjoyed it, and looking forward to another one. <laughs> I just feel like you need those days sometimes with your best fucking friend to just do whatever you know. Hundred percent. That home goods like walkthrough. Oh my god! Literally like therapy. Dead ass. Oh, we did nice. not spend a dime in home goods. No, today, guys. we went the fuck out of home goods, mm-hmm. but it was fun. It was definitely fun. Jingle jangle and that boba <laughs> schmack sword. It was so good. It was the first was time I've ever had so boba. Oh, like, tell them about the tablet. How we ordered. It was a fucking social anxiety person's dream. Yeah, it was like a, It was um, like how they have in those fancy McDonald's. You know, mm-hmm. like where you can order yourself in those big, big screens. Right. It was pretty much that just a little bit smaller screen. And you can do any specialty, like however you wanted to customize your drink or change mm-hmm. it or whatever. Like you could do all that there. We even changed our milk. You to the milk. And it was so good, dude. It was so good. It like was better t- with oat milk. I've never had it like that because I never had, yeah. had the option. Really loved it. Loved it. Yeah. It was great. This entire episode is going to just be a bunch of random updates. Cheese may chatter the whole way through. Just, so just me and there's no specific. What we topic. typically do when we're together, but you know, period. Now on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I had seen the update on Brian Laundry and I sent it to uh-huh. Gina and she was like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> like, <laughs> but the cause of death was announced on Tuesday, 11, 23. Um, that the laundry family's attorney announced that his death was ruled a suicide and that he died from a gunshot wound to the head. And I have the quote from the, yeah, from the attorney. His family's attorney said, Chris and Roberta Laundry have been informed that the cause of death was a gunshot wound to the head and the manner of death was suicide. Chris and Roberta are still mourning the loss of their son and are hopeful that these findings bring closure to both families. How? I don't don't, fucking know. Right. I don't know how that would bring closure to her family. I mean, besides the fact that he's dead, but it still doesn't, like, it makes sense as to why and what the fuck happened. Exactly. Like, you know, so I don't see how that- I'm still wondering about that notebook. (laughs) Because I heard that whatever was, whatever they did, they had to, like, wait for the drying process because obviously Uh it was underwater or whatever. But I heard that whatever they found in there, like it was legible, like they could read oh, it. Oh shit! I don't know what specifically, obviously, was found. I'm not um high of importance in the FBI, um should be, but I'm not. And uh, yeah, so supposedly they could read it. So who knows if there's like a suicide note or? I just don't get why. Like, okay, he killed himself. Like, I don't get was he like regretful or was he because like I had seen somewhere that um she was like she was strangled but they're saying it continued on after she was already dead or pa- at least passed out like it no it had to been obviously until she passed out because she died but she, so it was passed when she died wow. but she was still like he was still strangling her how did they know that I don't know it must be from like the like maybe how the deep wounds, yeah like maybe. the wounds were or something but it's horrible So it's like he continued even after she was gone. So was that something that you just did like in a rage like thing, but you were, I don't know. I don't know. It's so weird. Like, why would he kill himself? Right. Like the whole time he was running, but like you did it. To ultimately do that. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's the part I'm like, I I hope that Gabby's family is continuing to like, 
just work through everything and grieve as much as they can. And they've been helping so many other people with their foundation that I feel like at this point, they're just, they're not expecting any answers because they're probably Mm -hmm. never going to get any, unfortunately. So that I think they're just ready to move forward and start helping others, you know? And they've been, yeah, it's It's a really incredible thing. So, so Dollar Tree officially announced that they are raising their prices from $1 to $1.25 by the end of April 2022. The company has been charging things at a dollar for 35 years. So that's crazy to think that they're going to raise it. I mean, 25 cents percentage wise is a lot. Yeah. But I feel like people are still going to shop there, you know? Are, are they changing like every single thing to a dollar twenty five now, or like certain things that? Yeah. Oh, every single thing. Everything is gonna start at one twenty five. Do you know how the posters are fifty cents, even though it's Dollar Tree? So, like, do does the poster prices even go up to a dollar now, and everything is like a dollar twenty five, or? Right. I don't know. Probably just because. Um, It says the reasoning for price increase is to reduce freight and distribution costs and wage increases and will allow them to bring back some of the old products that they were no longer able to offer at a dollar. That's kind of cool. So exciting. I don't know what products are. I know, but it's kind of dumb because like, why didn't you just offer those at a dollar twenty five? Right. Yeah. People because they have have 99 cent stores and those go up to you can find things for 10 bucks there. And goes, 15 bucks yeah, if it's like something really anywhere. crazy it ranges you know so like, yeah they could have just done that there too that, exactly that's, that's right I didn't even think of that right but they said that 91 percent of customers they had surveyed said that they would still continue to shop at Dollar Tree after the change and shares of Dollar Tree rose more than 11 percent after the announcement so stock shares oh um, damn yeah that's a lot yeah that was kind of what the tweet was about but like so it said, so I had seen a tweet about it earlier, mm-hmm. um, like right, actually like right when you had put it, I had seen the tweet and I was like, oh. I was like, let me, I was like, let me go back and screenshot it. They were clapping Cause, back. Cause it was, you know, uh, they announced the price point that is going up. And then someone said Dollar Tree made a billion, $230 million in profits this year and gave its CEO 10 million and pays workers as little as 832 an hour. Over seven thousand four hundred Dollar Tree employees are forced to rely on food stamps and Medicaid subsidized by U.S. taxpayers. Cite the damn corporate greed. That was damn. the yeah. That was the whole tweet about it. So I was like, <gasps> so. But they're saying that supposedly are bringing up the wages. That's back, y'all. So I wonder. I wonder how much. Right. And you have to take more from the consumer in order to do so. There's questions. Definitely. That's weird. <laughs> I got questions. I just hope that they do have good intentions. I mean, it's obviously a business, so like I get it. But being a CEO of a company, I couldn't see myself ever making that much more than the people that work for me. Yeah. That's fucked up. Like I could just imagine all of their their mouths and their kids' mouths going hungry because I'm being greedy and not putting back into. Right. Right people who believe in me or believe in the company that I started, whatever the hell, you know, I I just feel like that's fucked up. If, if you can help someone and they're doing you a solid, you don't, as the CEO of Dollar Tree, what does he really, he or she really have to do on a daily, you know? It's literally, it's like Amazon, like homeboy is a billionaire, probably trillionaire. And he's paying his workers. Like everybody that I've ever known that's worked at Amazon hated it. Hated it. Yeah. yeah, like they don't get paid enough for what they're doing. They make them stand for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And they work extended hours too. Yeah. Like their normal shifts are not eight hours. Yeah. That's fucked. And I don't think they get overtime for their normal shifts that are like 10 to 12 hours. They don't? I don't think so because that's their actual normal shift. Holy shit. I didn't like they don't get signed up unless you're part time. I'm, I guess right. maybe, but I don't think that you can have just an eight hour shift there. Is that even? Legal? I've never, I've never known anyone who's ever no. worked just eight hours. There. But I like I, they like, always work 10 to 12. Least. Cause I thought overtime was like mandatory, like you had to do, but yeah. I thought it was overtime. I don't know. You know? Yeah. Oh, it should be voluntary though. Yeah. 
Hope not mandatory. I don't really know. I could be talking wrong. You know, don't sue us or whatever. <laughs> allegedly. Um, I don't know. Everything that we we're saying before and after this, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> the fucking, uh, the name of the episode, allegedly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope that they really do get their prices increased and that the people who work there don't have to suffer the backlash of people not wanting to pay an extra 25 cents each time, yeah. you know? Uh, I know a little bit about the, the Christmas parade one. I watched a couple of videos on it. You did? Okay. Dude, I was, on, I was on FaceTime. It had like just posted, I think it was yesterday or something. And I was mm-hmm. on FaceTime with my sister and I seen it and I, and I was like, and I made and I had her watch because they did a video of the yeah. thing going through and you're like, and I was like, dude, and I showed it to her. She's like, what the fuck? And I'm like, yeah, dude, they just posted it. Mm-hmm. Like, it just happened. Yeah, I didn't watch the video. I don't I don't think I want to watch the video. You don't, but no, you I don't see hear. you don't see oh. the contact of him hitting the people. But you just uh-huh. there, it's just a clip of how fast the car was going by. Oh, like, shit. In the okay. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So if you guys haven't heard already, there was a deadly Christmas parade in Wisconsin. And I was kind of confused. I think it's a Christmas like Christmas time parade. Obviously, it's not Christmas. Yeah. Yet, but this happened on the 21st of November. So far, unfortunately, six people have passed away and at least 40 people have been injured, including children. Doctors say 18 patients between the ages of three and 16 were taken to Children's Hospital in Wisconsin. They include three sets of siblings. Six children are in critical condition. So the guy who was driving the car, Daryl Brooks Jr., was charged with five counts of intentional homicide in the crash. So it happened on Sunday in, I don't want to say this wrong. I don't know if it's right, but Waukesha, Waukesha. I think that's Waukesha. Yeah. I don't, a Milwaukee suburb. Um, conviction on first degree intentional homicide, and he carries a mandatory life sentence. And I actually, I also heard that he's had a lot of priors, yeah, like a shit up before this. Yeah. yeah, like a lot. He has so, a very extensive record, apparently. Yeah. yeah. So they think it was, it was like intent, like obviously intentional, but he was going for someone specific. Oh, it was targeted. That's what they, I had heard say somewhere, someone say that. I don't know if it's true. Really? But yeah. But I'm not sure. obviously there's a bunch of children and the, the parade is like mostly, you know, there was lots of kids involved in it. Right. So that's the fucked up part is that like he knew there'd be a lot of kids around. Yeah. You know? And it was all adults who did, uh, the victims that have been identified have been all adults between 52 and 81 years old. That passed away. Yeah. So sad. Um, but not that that makes it any better, but the children are in critical condition. Some of them are still in the hospital, you know, fighting for their lives. So. That's so horrible. Like a Christmas parade, I think it's going to be so like fun and getting ready for like the season and all this stuff. And it just takes the parade. They're so family focused. Right. That it's like really yeah. fucked up that that's the outcome you know because you can't even feel like I can't even go to a Christmas parade with my kids in the town mm-hmm. that we live in you know it's just the same as the church shootings and in the movie oh. and all of these things it's like it makes you so scared to just do anything but you can't live your life like that obviously but how do you not <laughs> right honestly Fuck. honestly so yeah unfortunate Rest in peace to all the victims, all the families that were affected by this. So there's um, a few years ago. So there's like videos on it from a few years back where a family of 15, they're the Turpin family. I always kept saying turnip because I think I was thinking of like. Oh, backwards. Yeah. But like, yeah, Turpin family. um, Pretty much it was 13 children, you know, the two parents and the parents were just like abusing neglecting the children since and the only one to actually go into public school was the first the oldest and only until she I think she was like seven or nine and then they pulled her out and then after that isn't that illegal they said they were homeschooled but the homeschool that they put was the dad was the principal and the mom was the teacher and they just I guess never really looked into it enough to realize that you know and this is what's wrong with the fucking system. Right. And so this went on for like uh, over a decade, you know, years. Right. And um, 
newly released body cam footage of the police, the police officers. So the a 17 at the time she was 17, one of the girls, she snuck out of the house with the phone from the oldest because only a, a few of them had phones. That was and Jordan. That was Jordan. Yeah. Okay. She snuck out. And there's also footage of her like running out of her house mm-hmm. and called 911. I was on the phone with them and then the police came. So there's the 911 call. You can hear it. And then the footage of when the officer came and she's telling them and like, dude, they're asking her questions. Like, are you injured or are you on medications? And she's like, what's medication? What's an injury? Like they, she's like, literally, they've never really been on the streets. They haven't talked to strangers. So you can hear kind of how her vocabulary is like um, limited kind of, you know? Yeah. Um. But she's like, the reason I called is because two of my sisters are chained up to their beds right now. Like, and oh my God. And like the fucked up part is, so you see it. And then, so the police go to the house and they, you know, they go through and they have to unchain all the kids. Right. And like all this stuff. Were the parents there? The parents were there. So they knocked on the door for two minutes and the, they weren't opening. And like, fi- and then, and finally they opened the door and then they're like, oh, we're here on a, a welfare check or wellness check. Mm hmm. And um, so they were allowed because like there's potential danger of children inside. They ha- they don't need a warrant. They were able to just go in. Oh, and they were under 18. Yeah, because she had pictures too. She there, he's like, do you have any proof? And she's like, I have pictures. So she showed him. So that was enough, like for them to be able to go in. Mm-hmm. And they so found all of them. Stay outside of the house, and she snuck out. She stayed outside until the police got there. She stayed like she ran to like some corner. Like the the per- the lady on the 911 call was like find like find a street sign and she's like I don't know like what yeah you know, I, don't I don't know I how a, to communicate with you yeah right. and she she goes uh, I see a stop sign and she goes okay stay right there so okay. she like stayed there okay and then um, but she didn't have to go in the house when that's when what I was thinking came. I was thinking yeah she was I was thinking like did the parents realize that she was missing yeah no wow at that point not yet and so um you know, they go in there, they find them, they arrest the parents. And um, it's like, there's also a 2020 episode on it. Like it just came out because of the newly released footage and all that stuff. So they're kind of doing like the oldest who's 29 or no, she was 29 at the time. And then the one who snuck out, Jordan, mm-hmm. it's only them two that are speaking about it. They like on pictures, they, you know, blur every all the other siblings faces. out. I think they're the only ones like willing to talk about it or be like open to you know talk to like press or whatever about it um the oldest is 29 i think at the time so now she's 33 but they were keeping her at 29 Mm -hmm. wow yeah and so like in the thing it's showing how like malnourished they were and like all this stuff and um the fucked up like most fucked up part at least what I thought was one of the most fucked up parts was the mom had some kind of obsession with like, like she racked up credit cards, I guess, buying children's clothes and children's toys, but none of them were allowed to wear them or use them or play with them. Nothing what? like she, there was piles. Like they have pictures of the piles and piles of clothes and of games and board games and all this stuff, but they didn't the allow to use it. No. And, uh, and also the food, like they had one side stock of like, hella foods and like all this stuff and the kids were only allowed to eat us like like she was a couponer or something but like on credit cards damn near mm -hmm. and the reason why a couple of the sisters were chained up was because they ate some of her of mother's food oh my only she could have that food but they had to eat like figure out whatever else and they were hungry so they ate some and then she changed them they chained them up to their beds that's disgusting 13 like why would you have 13 children when after one, you were already showing that, like, it doesn't look like you enjoy this much. Right. But like, you enjoy continue. buying for them? Yeah. But then but they weren't allowed to, like, giving them any type of anything, any resources? Yeah. Well, from what I remember and understood, they were so malnourished that there was a preteen with, like, one of her arms was, like, the size of a four-month-old. Oh, my God. Because there was so many, like, they're saying, like, the nurses were crying when they all finally took them to the hospital because they were so malnourished. I could not even imagine. Yeah. And, like, they had to learn, you know, they had to learn more vocabulary and just, like, had right. speaking with strangers and all that kind of stuff. Do you know where they are now? 
Um, I think like if they're with other family members or if they're in the system, they're in the or... system. So okay. they, but the system's kind of, that was part, I think part of the um, reason also that they were like bringing it out is because the system kind of also failed them again, right? Because a lot of them are still de- like depending on food stamps and like yeah. can't really afford that much food or get by if anything, yeah. but they don't have the resources. Like they didn't grow up normally. So they, it's People harder to know them. how to get it. I'm sure exactly and you know all these things so but I think that the oldest one I think is like about training to become a manager wherever she's working or something like that Um, so they're like trying you know yeah yeah make it in society as adults now and not knowing anything I literally cannot even imagine yeah I wonder if maybe one day like she'll be able to adopt the siblings that are still in you know and then they'll stay together Hopefully that was also a thing that was like fucked up is that they used to make the parents used to make the older ones put the younger ones in, in cages. Like make the siblings do it. That's terrible. Like dude. I would say, I would, um, why have the, children? I don't understand. That, that's what I'm saying. Like third and 13. Like, how did you get to that point? I don't even get it. I don't. And then they were like crying at the, at the court, but they ended up, they ended up just um, pleading guilty. There was they the police walked in and seen them all yeah. up and how they lived like there's nothing they could have said you know it would have been so fucking stupid if they did I think they were about they're gonna try to like pin it on the fact that the mom had like experienced you know her own uh, traumas as, and as a child but like the things they both did it does not that's not a reason no. you know but it's only really, therapy uh, and not to wait until they have 13 children to do it. <laughs> right. right. And I think that's also what's wrong with the system is that things happen to people in their childhood or even in their, you know, adulthood and they don't get the support that they need. So then they make mistakes or they make bad decisions in their life because they never got the support. Granted, right. a lot of people don't want it, but also, a lot of people are not offered that type of help. So mm-hmm. I'm they don't even know that option. Uses for her, but still, you know, that's also what's wrong with the fucking system, yeah. you know? The 2020 episode is really um, very interesting in the sense of like you hear their perspective and then you get like the background too of like, of, like yeah. the parents, whatever. Watch I, th- I think, you, I think yeah. you should. I think you would definitely. Um, I'm crying my eyes oh. out, but oh, watch yeah, it. no, for sure. So it has to do with parents again, in a way. Um, But a grandmother who is raising her grandkids now after her son and his fiance were killed by a drunk driver is pushing legislators to support a proposed new law that would make drunk drivers pay child support if the parents are killed. The proposed law is called Bentley's Law, which would make drunk drivers pay child support if one or both parents is is killed. What do you think, Gina? I'm a hundred percent with that. Like a thousand percent. I, I mean, that's just such an amazing idea. It makes so much sense to me. Again, I I don't know how it would work if they're also in jail. Like there's questions that I just don't know, but I like the idea. Yeah. Because you're, I think they can work it out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They definitely deserve at least that. I think if they get enough, especially women, you know, because women especially about their children or anything like that you don't play with mama bears so I think if they get enough women behind it to really fight for it I think it really could happen let's make it not just women in general I'm saying everybody but I'm just saying like the way that moms go hard for their kids like not speaking about the last (laughs) person we talked about but moms go hard for their kids moms you know, good moms, they, they protect their kids. They want to keep their kids safe. And I think that this would really help people because now the grandmother is having to figure out, you know, she doesn't probably work anymore. And if she does, she doesn't have a lot of resources to be able to give to these children that she didn't really plan on having to raise, you know, I'm I'm sure she loves doing it now because she's able to, but she doesn't want the kids to have to struggle or, you know, people don't plan for those types of things to happen. That's a tragedy. So in order for them to move forward and have the life that 
they deserve or that, you know, the, the resources that they need. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good idea because where else are they going to get that money? Right. Right. You know, the brilliant genius idea. And on a lighter note, (laughs) on a lighter note, (laughs) I was looking on Twitter and literally like five, 10 minutes before we started recording. And I seen that potatoes, potatoes, papas win best vegetable for the 318th year in a row. <laughs> Honestly, though, it makes sense. Like, it does. I don't know why I always forget. Is potato really a vegetable? I thought it was a starch, but is that not a vegetable too? I on- <laughs> Damn, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the why public but, education uh, system. But, sucks. And I guess for the 318th year, then it has to be considered a vegetable. Yeah. So they put best vegetable in quotes, though. I don't know if that just means that that's, that's the title. What they call it. Yeah. Well, either way, if it is, I would definitely agree. Like potatoes in any form are just so good. 100%. Can't go wrong. 100%. So I was trying to see what the oh it says uh so someone retweeted the tweet and says nobody does it like my girl <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I'm a, oh, i thought that was- i mean you know the like one that changes you to a potato like i'm a potato <laughs> i'm a potato <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite because thanksgiving is tomorrow what's your favorite thanksgiving dish speaking of potatoes um, i don't know that i have a favorite a favorite dish to be honest I'll tell you I'm, mine I'm not a turkey person I'm not a turkey girl I'm a turkey <laughs> girl <laughs> like you I'm, know what's funny though I'm a turkey girl but I hate Thanksgiving turkey yeah I'm not a big fan of it um, yeah I, I, I like the turkey, turkey processed deli meat <laughs> <laughs> I <like> processed turkey <laughs> but so uh, turkey's not damn you like ham no? huh ham I like ham. It's not my favorite. Sometimes mm-hmm. I don't even eat it. <laughs> really? Like maybe if I put one slice on there, but mashed potatoes. But that's my favorite anytime. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever the good is that's there. My favorite's always the mac and cheese. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, some cornbread. Ooh. See, those are like at any point, I'm like, I'll take it. Yeah. Like, I will take it. Do you like pumpkin pie? Love. Love. I do, yeah. too. You don't like apple pie, though, because though. it's warm fruit. Mm. Yeah, not a big apple pie. For- I said even with pumpkin pie, I need a lot of whipped cream. Same. And I don't really eat the crust all that much. If like, it, the... <laughs> The the edge dry, press, then I'm like, I don't really eat that much. Yeah, because it just crumbles, and then the fork is just breaking it more, and then yeah. it's just, yeah. I don't have time for that. We hope you guys have a beautiful Thanksgiving with your families. Leave us a comment on our Instagram of what you're thankful for. Or you can leave us an Apple podcast review. That helps us out a lot, too. We'd be thankful for that. We'd be or very thankful. your favorite um, Thanksgiving food, too. Oh, yeah. Tweet <laughs> us. DM us. Comment on our Instagram. Quote of the week. Be proud of how you've been handling these past few months. The silent battles you fought, the moments you had to humble yourself, wipe your own tears, and pat yourself on the back. Celebrate your strength. Oh my God, I needed that. If we can make your day brighter by talking about something specific, let us know because they're on Instagram. Period. We will <laughs> deliver for you. Love, guys. <laughs> like our slogan. For you. And you. For you. All right, guys. We hope you happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your Thanksgiving crusty ass turkey. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. Bye. Bye.